Welcome to Practical Shooting, Volume 7, How to Practice. I'm Matt Burkett and this is Kevin Elpers. Today we're going to help you with several tips and drills that will take your shooting to the next level. So let's get to that first tip. Let's get going. Matt, when I, uh, you know, we've been through all these videos and you've taught me several skills, but when it comes to actually getting back home and practicing these skills, I don't feel like I do it very effectively. I feel like I get out there and I throw a bunch of ammo down range and I leave. You, and then when you I don't get, have any plan for your practice, probably. Probably. Yeah. You know, when you when you head out to the range, you should actually have a clue of what you're going to go do. You know, write it down. Have a journal. You find out what your weaknesses are, and you can only do that by having a plan. You got to you got to have some idea conceptually of what the goal is of what you're going to go do. Right, and some of the times it's like I think I have to practice for a stage and I have to have all these complicated setups and all to get a good practice session in. And that, you know, that's a problem because a lot of us don't have that gear to work with. Right, well what you find actually if you watch most of the Grand Masters practice, you'll see them always working the basic skills. And that's what we're going to do with the drills in this video later. As you'll see, it's a series of basic drills that are able to come together into one final package. And these are repeatable that I can go today and shoot them and a month from now shoot them again and compare yeah if you, if you track your results the uh, we have tracking sheets they're on the DVD you have to open it up and explore the DVD and then just print out the tracking sheets and you're able to check your draws your transitions your movements all of that stuff and see if you're actually improving across a time frame or if you take a, like a six month break and you come back you can see how much you lost to get back to where you were okay you know does it help to throw a camera on yourself or have somebody with that uh, well, it helps, especially when you have like three of them here. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you videotape yourself with a camera, a lot of people screw that up, uh, especially when they're out, uh, they're out training by themselves. First of all, they'll leave the camera running for hours. Instead of just tr filming what they need to film, most of the cameras have a little tiny remote, and if they just hit the start button, then do their drill, and then hit the stop button, the review is going to be much more efficient and much more useful. More useful. Mm -hmm. If you're uh, filming to edit it later you want to put together a little cool shooting tape and or you know you can set it in I'll take a look at it and critique it uh, make sure you put in at least five seconds or start the camera at least five seconds before you go and then after the last shot leave it on for five seconds okay if you're filming somebody one of your buddies on a stage for a you know for a training review later tell them not to use the the zoom button because there's you zoom with your feet not with the camera, unless you're a, a pro camera guy like the guys we got here. Uh, other, okay. it, the whole picture goes like this, and it's all over the place. I see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just track the guy. Even a real wide shot's fine, because you'll still be able to see what he's doing. And pick up the mistakes or the subtleties of where you're missing, losing time along the stage. Absolutely. You can take a look, and you can see if your, your box entries are bad, or you need to work on keeping your gun up. You know, all of those different things that make huge chunks of time they get added on at the end, you know? Some of the other things I know I get into, like, when I practice, the, the plate rack's out there. Okay. And it's easy to shoot. You know, you, you draw, bang, 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 bang. You do that over, you do that about ten times, you get tired of loading your mags and you leave. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't use the plate racks. I mean, we've got one of the MGM plate racks right back here from MGM Targets, and they don't utilize them effectively. They just burn ammo on them, which right. is a lot of fun. But you can do all sorts of different transitions. You can take and shoot left plate, right plate, and back and forth across the metal. If you have a barricade, you can shoot the left side, right side, left side, right side, left side. You know, back and forth. You've got two boxes. You can shoot two plates, run to the other box, shoot two plates, run back, shoot two plates. So you can use one piece of equipment for several different drills. Right. Well, okay. you're going to find out that we also have like three standard 10-inch uh, plates, and on those three plates, you can do almost every drill out to 50 yards. And it takes it takes care of a lot of the problems like taping time, you know, mm -hmm. the downtime of right. walking out right. there to tape everything up. You know, and that just, that, that eats up your practice session. We want it to be efficient, so if you've got a goal when you go to the range and you actually planned your training, when you get out there, you know that this is going to take you three minutes, this will take you five minutes, this will take you ten minutes, whatever. You can go there in an hour or two hours, whatever you want to set up, actually have an efficient, uh, efficient training system. I know one other thing I get into is I'll, I'll get to a match and there'll be something in the match that's hard to do, you know, a weekend or 
just something different and it's like you know really wish i had practiced that somewhere along the line you've got to have your training so that it hits all of the facets of whatever you're going to do whether it's for competition or defensive use of use of a handgun you know what are the oddball things that are going to come up are you going to shoot weak hand are you going to shoot weak hand prone <laughs> i have i have done that it is awkward and you got to think of all these oddball things, write them down, and the really oddball ones, practice them every once in a while, because you're not going to run into them all that, you know, all that often. But um, make sure they get in there. And especially with your weaknesses, when you get out to a match, I'm sure you've had this, where you've got the, uh, uh, the one target at 15 yards, and you've got like six rounds on it weekend. Yes. And all of a sudden the heart goes right you uh, tighten up and you you kind of blow the stage because you've never put yourself in that position before right and you've mm -hmm. got to do that in practice practice is where you do the work to make the job on the range easier and then you know a lot of times in practice obviously we can't all go to the range all the time it's a lot easier to pick your gun up at home and just dry fire but you know that gets terribly boring uh you're gonna give us dry some hints fire, there to... dry fire can be exceedingly boring i actually usually do it in front of the tv uh, I'll do uh, like... Have you shot your TV yet? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Luckily enough, make sure you don't have any ammo in the room while you're dry firing. So, you know, not in the room at all. If you set your gun down, go get a, you know, go get a bottle of water or whatever else and come back, clear your gun again. Every time you pick up that gun, check it. Because you'll be amazed how ammo can show up at the wrong time and you'll make a hole in something you don't want to. Be as safe as possible dry firing. But okay. dry firing is one of the most critical things to taking your performances to the next level. But we do, um, you know, a lot of times when I dry fire, and I, obviously with my skill level, I don't do enough of that, but uh, it'll basically be a draw and a click, you know. You, you run out of ideas. Right, and I guess you need to work on, like, more and more of the stages you're picking the gun off a table or out of a pouch or something. It's not always out of the holster, and we spend so much time drawing. Just working this area. Right. Well, um, Steve Anderson's dry fire book, He's got a dry fire drill book that you can actually do times in and everything else. And there's a whole skill set in there to work on. It's fantastic. And that helps it keep from being boring. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing you can't do in dry fire that most people don't realize is the timing and tracking of the gun and recoil. Right. You can do draws, reload, sh you know, act like you're shooting on the move. All of those different issues. A strong hand, weak hand, you can build that trigger control up in dry fire. And so it saves a lot of money, you know, I mean, it makes right. a big difference. Right. Okay. And then as far as, um, I guess once you start going through this and, and we, we come up with a standard set of drills, how do we move ourselves, push ourselves to that next level? A lot of people have a real hard time pushing themselves. That's probably why I get most of the students that come in for training is they can't kick themselves in the butt. Um, you kind of plateau when you go out there to a level. Uh, yeah, well, you'll flatten out, and it's it's really hard to motivate yourself to get to that next level. So, I mean, one of the things that I'm I'm really good at is generally I could take a student if they're a uh, a BA class student, they've got some of the good fundamentals going on, mm -hmm. and it's really kind of funny because if I just actually yell at them to go faster, they'll knock twenty percent off their time. Do you still have that stick that you hit people with? I don't, I don't hit people with the stick anymore. I'm, I'm nicer now, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, but we've, we're on camera, so I'm not going to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to push yourself. And sometimes when you're pushing yourself, you're going you're gonna to run into the edge of the envelope, and you're going to start missing. That's okay. It's practice. It's training. You have to drive yourself to be able to find how far you can go, and then you can pull it back. Okay. But if you don't know what your limitations are, you never will get near them. So if you don't practice that pushing and you get to a match and you're pretty hyper like I am, I have a tendency to push at the match. Right. You need the other thing. You need, you need right. to push and practice and you actually lay back in the match. You get more visual information. If you pull your shooting back to 90, 95% of your capabilities in a match, it's going to feel like it's really slow mm -hmm. and it's gonna, you know, you're going to see all these new things happening. And that's okay, because when you get done, you'll have a great time, and you'll probably have shot significantly better than you ever thought you would. Actually put a couple holes in the target? Right. That'd be good. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's show you that next shooting tip of keeping the gun up. Okay, great.
Yo, Kevin, uh, we've talked about nearly everything as far as the details and all the other videos, but I really think that people don't get how important some of those things are. Keeping the gun up while you're moving is so critical, it's unbelievable. You lose time, you know, the gun will be in the wrong spot when you come into a box and you lift the gun up. Right. Uh, the other thing I see a lot of new shooters do, and even some of the ones that have been around a while, is when they run with it down here, what's it doing? It doesn't look too safe. Exactly, yes. it's swinging around. So if you, got, if you can follow a couple of very simple rules, it'll keep you out of trouble on 180s. Keep the gun centered towards the berm. You know, downrange towards the berm. Keep your finger out of the trigger guard. Keep it way up on the side. And then keep the gun up in what I like to call the face box area, which is, you know, right in this area. So I can see it visually, but I have it just below where the target level is when I'm moving. Now, safety-wise, this brings in a really big thing. If you've got the gun down here and you're running and you trip or you run into something, where does it go? Well, probably back here. <laughs> back into, yeah, it could go back into yourself. If you've got it up here, what's our natural reaction with our hands? It's probably to throw it out, yeah. Right. That's safe. That's going to be okay. You know, so, I mean, it gives us the option if we do screw up, we're at least still safe. Okay. Right. And then the, uh, I get, I, you know, we've talked about this before, obviously, but I do find myself in a stage between targets, you know, oh, you doing do? this kind of thing. And then you have to reacquire the gun sights, and well, that just takes the, a lot of time. With so. the gun up... And with your eyes looking exactly where you need to go, you won't have that problem nearly as much. Let's just do a little thing here. Step okay. into the first box. Pull out your gun and clear it for me. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is just do a very simple box entry to the right, okay. which works with any type of position work. You know, if you've got a barricade there or anything else, it's still the similar thing. It just makes it easier to train for. So, what I want you to do is put the gun up on target one, look at the box, so you're looking where you're going. Always looking where you're going. Once you know you can get there, look back at exactly where you want that next bullet to go. Okay. So, go ahead and move over there then. Good. You had the gun up when you came in. Okay. What, what you'll see a lot of people do, go ahead and holster up. Here's where I watch people lose a half second on every box in almost every stage. Okay. They come over to that other box. And, and just that, that movement adds a half second because they have to bring the gun back to the target. And those half seconds count. It, it'll add up to, you know, a second and a half, two seconds a stage if they just get this one thing down right. And even back to our dry fire, this is something you can do in your basement. Right. This is something you can do in the basement, something very simple. Practice having everything right up in front of you. And then minimize your movement. Try to minimize your steps. You know, if you're, tar if you're starting with a surrender draw, don't start with your arms up like this. Right. You know, start with them here. They say your hand can't be touching the gun for the start position. Well, be ready for it. Okay. You know, try to keep everything as simplistic but as easy and as efficient as possible. And build that into your practice, which is, I mean, what this video is about is trying to get you to practice more efficiently and practice the right things that will right. actually take your shooting. But I think that's what a lot of us do is practice the wrong thing. Well, um, a lot of people, they just, they don't have any concept of why they're practicing in the first okay. place. They think that just being down there, putting rounds out. Well, I, I'm a golfer sometimes. Not very good at that either, but uh, about a C golfer. So anyway, but you do the same thing. You get out on a golf range and you just whack the golf ball and you think you're practicing, but right. you're really not. And, and I in, think we And in golf, the putting is what, 70% of your shots? Yeah, unfortunately. And nobody practices the putting because it isn't right. fun because you're not nailing something 70 yards or 300 yards or whatever. Right. You know, it's the same thing out here. we got to work on what we're not happy with. What's okay. the part of this that, that really sucks? Weak hand, strong hand, 50 yards, all right. the different things. Work on all those. You don't have 50 yards available, but you got 20 yards or 25 yards. Work on reduced target sizes. Well, what can we do? Uh, I'm from Indiana. It's winter. Mm -hmm. We don't have a nice desert to go shoot in. We have to shoot indoors, and we generally just have one range. If we... you get the one, the one bay at the, or not the bay, the actual lane on the range, you got your one target. Take and put 10 dots on it. You know, you can get those shoot and see dots, right. the, the ones Little that... Little fluorescent guys. Yeah, they yeah. fluoresce and everything when you hit them. Put them all over the target and do target transitions between those. Okay. You know, shoot a double on one target, or, you know, on one of them. Transfer, shoot a double there. Always looking exactly where you want that next bullet to go. 
Yeah. You know? Some ranges probably would allow you to hang a couple targets so you can transition You might up be and able down. to do that, but you got to watch for the floor right, action right. And, and hitting the concrete on the floor. Mm -hmm. But I mean, work it all the way down at the end of the range. Mm -hmm. Work it up close. So you got that speed difference going on. So in our practice drills, how important is distance practice? Distance to me is exceedingly important. Uh, I try to practice quite a bit out at 50 yards because I find that everything closer is easier. So at 50 yards, it amplifies your mistakes. I mean, at, at seven yards, you might really be doing bad things with your gun, but get by with it and still shoot an A. Well, that brings up the, um, one of the concepts I've started teaching is the variable triad. It's variable trigger control, recoil control, and sight picture. If I've got a target at 50 yards, I have to do all of those three things nearly perfectly to do what I need to do. If I've got a target at 7 yards, I can get really sloppy with the sight picture, really sloppy with the trigger control, and but I'm going to do a different recoil control. I'm gonna, probably going to muscle into that gun more. Okay. I've got a bigger cone of effectiveness to, to be okay. You know, out at 50, it's got to be like this. At 7, it's going to be like this, and I still have the same score. But even if we're indoors, as, as far as you can go, push that target all push the way down. Push it out there. Shoot strong hand. Shoot weak hand. Shoot. Use a 22 pistol if you need to. If you want to save some money, uh, and you're on an indoor range, buy yourself a 22 pistol. If you're shooting an open gun, put the same scope on it that you've got on your open gun. If you're or shooting iron sights, you can buy a conversion package or something. You can buy a conversion package for a Glock or a 1911, mm -hmm. and uh, you know try to get the exact same sight set up so you visually train with the same thing. And the difference in recoil isn't. It's more it's, effective to have the more shots and the... It, it, it's for building trigger control. Okay. When you build that trigger control up and separate that from the rest of the system, it su makes such a difference because that trigger control, once you start missing and screwing up, that's everything okay. right there. So uh, very simply, a little recap here. Keep the gun up whenever you're moving. Keep it up in this face box. Do your reloads up there. Real simple thing, but it seems to be hard for a lot of people to get. Minimize that movement on draws, on anything when you're looking through a stage. Look for places to save time. And then look where you're going whenever you're moving to another position. The movement is the important thing. So you focus on the movement. When you know you're going to get there, then look for the targets and look exactly where you want that next bullet to go. One of the first things I do when I get to the range is group shoot. So the first drill we're going to work with is group shooting. I set up a target at 20 yards and I do a, usually a 10 round group so I can check the sights, make sure the gun's working, I'm settling in, and it gets me to focus on the practice session. So is this a just bang 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 10 drills, 10 shots, or what <laughs> no, am I looking for? No, it's group shooting. You can take 5 to 10 seconds a shot. You know, if you need to rest your eyes in between or bring the gun down, go ahead. Is it better to bring the gun down? To... Nah, I, I kind of like to do the group, the gun up, unless I'm, I'm just taking too long, but I want it to be 10 perfect shots. Great sight picture, great trigger control, you know, really focusing on the trigger control and the break and the reset. Okay. You know, we talked about the resetting of the trigger in some of the other videos. Bringing that all in in one spot so that we can nail a perfect group, because if we don't do it right, well, the rest of the session. Right, and I assume there is some give and take on timing. You can't stand there for 10 or 15 seconds because you're going to get. They might get fatigued, but you know what? You got to build those muscles up anyway. Okay. But um, let's have you step in here. And now, if you've got a single stack, just go ahead and do just a one magazine group. But it just lets us check everything out. Go ahead and load and make ready. And then shoot me a group on that left target, 10 round group. Now you're jumping your finger on and off that trigger every shot. Okay, holster up. Now, one of the little things I saw was you'd pull that trigger and you'd jump your finger right off. Okay. Okay. It's going to tighten up your groups if you get your focus on that trigger finger and actually control the motion. So what that leads me to is kind of a jerky reaction. Forward and back, forward and back, like that. Now, okay. that, that does work for some people as far as trigger control. That does does do a good job for them, but very few people can do it effectively without jerking it around. Okay. You know, jerking it off to the left, jerking it high. We need to focus on pulling that trigger straight to the rear. Okay. Okay. And then when it goes bang, hold it back for a second or two in your group shooting. Then slowly reset it and actually control the reset. Oh, okay. Okay. Instead of just punching it forward. Don't get in a hurry to make the next shot. 
Right. This is group shooting. This is just trying to get everything perfect. Okay. Okay. Let's let's see if this 40 I've got here from SV is sighted in. Let's go down and see what we hit. Okay. Now, my group is centered where I want it to be. It's a little bigger than I want it to be, but it's the first time I've ever shot this gun, so okay. no big deal. The main thing is, it's up in the upper part of the A-box okay. on this target, which is a great place to hit it because if I did jerk the trigger a little bit, it gives me some free area down there. But my left and right's pretty solid. I actually felt that round, and I jumped on it. Okay. Are, there, are there tendencies for people to shoot low? Uh, Almost always, they almost always shoot down here. Okay. You know, and that's where they aim because it's visually half that target. So it's just something to remember. Whenever you're out practicing, make sure you're you're shooting those targets in the right spot. Otherwise, you just give away free points. All you're doing is aiming in a different spot. It's not recoil control or anything else. Now, what we have going on here is first of all, you're pushing to the left, which is pretty standard with Glocks, because it, it of the swing be a... of the trigger. You know, you've got to you do that. And Potentially, then... could be a side issue too with. You, you might not be sighted in properly. So what we'll do is we'll make an adjustment and then we'll see if those things move around. So when you're... Then when I get these these wild ones, that's... That's your trigger, trigger control, control or... I mean, there could be a gun problem, mm -hmm. but this will tell you that you're having problems when you're out on the range. Okay. You know, so I always do this before you go out and do a, you know, do a good practice session. Make sure you get settled in a little bit and the bullets are going where they're supposed to be first. I've had stuff loosen up on me and let's walk on back up range. Uh, by the end of a practice session, I've had it loosen up on me too. But does it help to uh, get it on a bench and shoot from a, a solid position to, to make sure it's the if, gun if or you've it's got the a, If you've got a real problem like that, like it is way off to the side, yeah, bench the gun up, sandbag it, and you know, put it on a rest, whatever you need to do, make sure it's dialed and the problem isn't with it. Okay. And then if, if it is you, that way you've got it diagnosed one way or the other. Okay. Uh, it, you say this every time. This is just something you do at the start of every? The start and end of every practice session. Kind of a breather to get into it and one yeah, to kind of it, come back out. Yeah, it gets out. you back to that gun. Okay. And that's the most important thing when you're out shooting is to be back on that gun. You know, is to actually be paying attention to the darn thing, which people have a tendency to never do. Well, the other issue I run into is, is I, I mix through guns. I, I'll shoot my Glock and I'll go back to my SV and different grip angles and all that. So this would also help... You know, if you're practicing for a specific event, I assume you practice with that gun and get Absolutely. yourself... Absolutely. And if you change guns in a practice session, go do the group with the new gun. You'll figure out the trigger control, the sight picture's going to change, your visuals are going to be different, the recoil's going to change, and it'll help you settle into that new gun. Okay. Okay? Now, in drill two, one of the things I always like to do right after the group shooting I want to get some of the weak hand and strong hand practice in before I'm really fatigued. Okay. You know, because that also will help bring up that trigger control. Right. I notice a lot of times when I go strong hand, weak hand, especially weak hand, and I see it in other shooters, the gun... Well, it, 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 it not only vibrates, but also right when you're pulling the trigger, it probably goes... Ugh. It just does all kind of silly things. So how do you... <laughs> you got to build up that muscle strength. Okay. Okay. You can do that by holding the gun up five minutes a day in okay. dry fire practice, you know, or even you can do that two, three times a day. After a couple of weeks, it'll amaze you how much difference there'll be. Now, the um, one way to make sure you're not vibrating too much is just relax that left arm. You don't have to choke the heck out of the gun and be using all those muscles so you're all vibrating and tense. So if you're, if you haven't practiced it a lot and you walk into a match and you know it's going to be hard some nerves and everything else that are working against you as well. Absolutely. So you just, you know, just relax. And if you always remember to go back to the basics, especially when you have something you really don't do much, just try to get back to those basics and just think sight picture, trigger control, and feel that trigger finger actually interfacing with the trigger. And probably don't try to make up five seconds you lost on the last stage weekend on this stage. Right. Exactly. Okay. That'll never work. You can never play catch up. It just doesn't work. Okay. You know, if you could have shot faster, you should have done that in the first place. Okay. Okay. Yeah, normally this drill you're going to have um, like 10 round strings or a magazine or, you know, if you're on a single stack or a high cap, you can shoot more or less. You can modify these things, but if you do five 10 round strings strong hand and five weak hand, you know, and, and but rotate them. Okay. Okay. Because that way you won't get too fatigued on one arm. All right. 
and I like to do them so that I'm actually in one position and as the gun's up here, I, you know, we have two targets set up for you to shoot at. But the gun's up in front of me. I don't, I don't care for that whole turnoff thing. I think we talked about that in one, two, um, three. We've talked about some other times, the canting of the gun. For me, it helps a little bit, for some reason, to cant on well, my off. What actually happens hand. with the offhand is, if you're, especially if you're right eye dominant, you're moving the gun to the eye. So you'll see a lot of people do this. There's no reason to do that. Just put a little cant into it. It also puts the arm muscles in line and the bones in line with the arm to help with better recoil control. Okay. A little bit of cant's not a big deal. You'll actually find that out to about 20 yards, you can take the gun 90 degrees. It'll still hit within a couple of inches of where the sights are if you do good trigger control. Okay. Okay, so step on in. And normally this drill will be about 100 rounds. It should take you probably five, 10 minutes. We're not looking for extremely fast shooting. We're just looking for a consistent cadence and starting to build our smoothness. So you're loaded up from that last drill. Get that gun out. Let's check how much ammo you got in it. I'm loaded. OK. Gun up on target, strong hand. Now notice he's got his weak hand anchored. He's nice and solid. Place your finger on the trigger. A lot of people will place their finger in the wrong spot on the trigger weak handed strong hand. They'll shove it all the way through. So watch that position. Go ahead, shoot me a group. Ten rounds. Good. Good. You can count to ten. I didn't in the last drill. I noticed that. <laughs> that looked really good, nice and solid. You're getting a pretty consistent flip. Um, Locking the arm or unlocking the arm, it's really a personal preference. It's what you need to work with, with your body. Some people don't have the strength to keep the arm unlocked. Uh, to get into more of a relaxed position, if you just lock that arm and just relax the hand a little bit, it might give you a little bit of trigger control. Okay. So, I mean, it's just different things to play with, but a, but a drill like this gives you those options to do that. So. If you shoot enough of this drill, you can try some different things and see your results. And Absolutely, and track your results. Okay. You know, use those tracking sheets to, to go, yeah, I got 10 A's. I got 8 C's on this one. Okay. You know, I felt a lot slower, but I was more accurate. Or I felt a lot slower, but I jerked everything all over the place. Write it down. Make a journal. Okay. Let's try it weekend. Shoot the other target so we can see the difference between the two groups. Now on your weekend, make sure you watch that finger position on that trigger. See, I'm, I'm off now. You're, uh, you're jerking the heck out of it, aren't you? Yeah. Well, first just... of all, when you put your gun back up on the target, you've got this huge gap under here. So you're not getting any, any of the good recoil control. We want that hand up as high as we can. Okay. And we're, even on a gun like a Glock, we're going to act like we have a safety here and pull against, pull against it up here on the frame. Okay. Okay. Now place your finger on that trigger. I'm gonna look at your position. That looks good. And then just play with the pre-travel before the break and just add pressure to it and hold it back after it goes off. Now as a C, I beat the miss you had earlier. Try it again. Good. Work on bringing it back and focus on that trigger finger. Nice, another A. Now, did you feel a difference on that one? Because that one went hard to the right. I jumped it, yeah. You, you jumped on it. So now you're starting to pay attention to that trigger finger, which will help you build that, okay? Feel that trigger coming forward and back. Smooth. And don't do a complete swing through. Add pressure to it instead. There, did you see you corrected yourself? Yeah, I was just getting ready to jump it, and then right, I stopped. because you were paying attention. That's what these kind of drills help you build up. They bring you back to the gun. Okay, go ahead and clear out. Gun clear, slide forward, hammer down, holster. The drills are so critical. I, I mean, if, if you'd have had 10 shots weekend in a match, you'd probably had four or five misses. Right, right. Yeah, you know, so work weekend and strong hand at least 10 to 20% of your shooting when you're out on the range practicing every time. Make sure you don't have that deficiency. Well, I think it. I can now transfer what I just found out there to even, you know, a two-handed grip shot because yeah. I'd, I'd, it amplified my mistake. Oh, yes, it did. The, uh, the thing is, when we've got two hands on the gun, the one hand allows, the, allows us to have bad trigger control. We've reduced the amount of contact by 50%, the hmm. amount of structure behind the gun by 50%. So we end up, be, everything is amplified. 
So is it pretty typical that you get somebody with a weak hand like I? If you're if you're right-handed normally, and you're going to jerk to the right weak-handed because your hand is going to clench and fire all of the muscles throughout the whole thing. So it's going to do this. So That's your jerk. So most of the misses that I get They're are to be the right. To the right or lower right. But it's not because I aim. It's because of a. It's not your a no. Motion. It's not an aiming issue. It's most likely purely just a trigger control problem. Because I know consciously in a match, I aim to the left side of the target. Yeah, I'm because you have this basic trigger control issue. Because you've never okay. developed it. Get out, get a 22, and go shoot 500 rounds weekend every time. Costs you like nine bucks, but that will build that trigger motion in and separate that finger from the rest of the hand. Because okay. we've never trained this part of the hand to do that. Right. Especially since we don't use it to write or do you know any dexterity movements with it. I don't it. use it to do anything. So well, there you go. <laughs> I am very right-handed. It's so. going to make this a lot harder then. Okay. Let's go take a look at your targets. Okay. Now, strong hand, you're looking really good and solid here. You've developed some pretty good trigger control. I've seen people that can actually shoot groups pretty solid freestyle, and then they go strong hand, and they're all off to the one side when they're right-handed. So they get that same issue. Right, because they, the way. yeah, it, it masks the issue when we get both hands on it. Okay. okay, so that's nice and solid, you're just a little off to the left. We want to work on that until they're all centered and we're actually breaking nice, clean shots. Okay. Weak hand, we can see we were, I mean, we got one all the way down here. I think we have one all the way out here. Too. Yeah, I think there's, there's probably a couple off in the dirt. And that's, that's from that clenching issue. And so what I'm, I'm doing is actually I'm yeah, kind of grabbing when you, when the When you're gun. grabbing this and moving that trigger finger, and this is something you can work on in dry fire, go ahead and move your trigger finger. I'm yeah, but you don't even have to. Just move your trigger yeah. finger back and forth. See how hard it is just yeah. doing that? Yeah. That's, that's where it comes from in the first place. We, we use all those muscles instead of just the one we need to use. Because we've probably never had to isolate that Exactly. Finger, we've right? never had to do it. Yeah. But uh, get out and do that drill because it's really important to your shooting. Okay. Now on drill three here, we've got a target at 7, 15, and 25. Drill three is Bill Drills, named for Bill Jordan, a famous revolver shooter. Okay. Okay. There's six rounds in a string. It helps you really nail down your stance, your grip, your trigger control. It helps start picking up the speed in your training. Okay. Okay. Now in the, uh, when you're actually practicing these, you know, try to do four runs at each of the distances. So you've got, you know, you get really settled in behind that gun. Some modifications you can do is you can go to an entire magazine. You know, shoot the entire magazine. You'll find if you get stance failures that way and, you know, everything else going on. I assume this is something else, of, back to the indoor shooting, that you can do indoors. If, you can... if the range lets you do it, they might not let you shoot more than one round per second or something, and you, I would find a different range at that point. Okay. But, um, yeah, you just put it out to seven. Do six rounds, do six rounds, do it again and again until you're comfortable and then push it back. If you're running this with a timer because you want to track your results, the goal is always, and the starting goal, the, the old master class area used to be about two seconds. You know, it's a nice, nice pace. And that, and then, you know, at the 15 yards, you're probably looking at two and a half to three seconds and probably four seconds at 25. You know, that's a good good place to shoot for for those six rounds. And, and this is a good drill, as we talked about pushing earlier, is to, to bring it up slow and push and push till you find yourself that you've gone over your, your cliff. So when everything starts going back. out, you know, and then try to bring it back together. Okay. You know, so let's, let's just, you, you can do this with a draw or without a draw, with the timer, however you want to do it. Okay. So we're just going to do it with the gun up in the ready position, which will be up in, in front of our face at the face box. So load make ready. And so, Kevin, it'll just be a presentation and six clean rounds feeling that trigger control. And we want them all in the A zone as quickly as possible. Nice. Bring it back. Do it again. Now, he had some great follow-through after that. Remember, when you're doing these drills, try to build that follow-through in every time of leaving the gun up and assessing what's going on. Did your grip come loose? Did your stance fail on you? What's going on? Let's do it again. Now you had a little bit of a cadence problem there. We want a rhythm to these shots. We want them to sound exactly the same every split. So pick up the speed. First of all, pick up the presentation. You now start okay. speeding that up. So you get that gun up and drive it into that target. And then I want them to sound bang, 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 bang. Okay. Let's go. 
And you're all over the place. Why is that? Do we I have our knees locked? The speed. We don't yeah. have our knees locked, do we? Possibly. Okay, load up another mags. Let's go to the 15 yard target. Go ahead. Now, if you notice on the 15 yard target, you shot it in the wrong spot. You shot too low. We're looking for the center of that A zone. You're shooting at where the letters are, but that's not the center of the A zone. Okay. Okay, so let's pick up that speed and find the correct aiming point. Go. Now that one doesn't count because you actually shot two C's and a D. Right. So you've got to get those nailed down right into the A zone. Let's, so let's hit them. It's a matter of pushing it too far at that point. No, I wouldn't say you're pushing it too far. You're just not paying attention to the right things. Okay. Drive that sight back to that notch, pull that trigger back, and pay attention to that trigger control. Now, you didn't shoot any faster that run, and they were all A's. Your focus changed. You were actually paying attention, and that's what most people don't do. So let's go for that 25 yard. I have one run here. Good. We want more cadence the next time you go out in the range and practice this. Okay. Okay, go ahead and unload and show clear. Hammer down, holster. I'm gonna step in where you're at, and I'm just gonna try it on this first target, just to see if I can get that cadence down with this gun. Work those presentations, work driving that gun up and into the target. Okay, all A's, nice and solid. So one more time. My goal would be to actually shoot that fast and bring them into a group, you know, a little tiny group, so that the sight's coming back consistently every time, working the equivalent of timing drills. Okay. okay. On drill four, draw drills, you're gonna take and set up with 10 freestyle draws at uh, each of the different distances. You, gotta, you still got the target set up from last time. So right. it's a very simple way of following through. So you don't have to move anything around. You can go right into these. These okay. this should only take you like 10, 15 minutes for practice. So you got 10 at each distance. Then you're going to want to do your strong hand, your weak hand, you know, probably five at each distance, mm -hmm. which by the way, you're going to have to focus when you get out to 25 yards. Right. Then you're going to want to do five like off of a table or out of a position, you know, where you've got to actually go get the gun. Okay. And you could do those at each distance if you wanted to do that too, you know, and track them. Uh, so, you know, what is it off of a table to a 25-yard target? Yeah. Make these drills your own. Don't just do exactly what the sheet says. Yes, you can do that. That'll get you some great practice in. But you have to find where your weaknesses are and work on those. So, you know, you could take and modify it. If you've really got your strong hand draws down, but you don't have your weak hand down, do just a couple of strong hand and do more weak hand. So you okay. make an efficient practice session. Okay. So um, then we're going to add in the kneeling and the prone which we've got this out here so you can do some of that. I know how much you love kneeling and prone after just getting back from skiing. Yes, I have such good legs right now. So. <laughs> well, let's do, some, uh, let's do some draws. Let's step into the box and go, uh, let's just do uh, a couple of freestyle draws at each distance and we'll just see how your times are going, okay? Shooter ready. Stand by. Somebody kind of jumped the gun on that one. You have a slow trigger back there. I got a slow trigger. Remember that timer can go off between, uh, well, in, in IPSC shooting, between one and four seconds. And four seconds when you're waiting for it seems it's a long like time. forever. Okay, so let's try it again. You got an A at least. Let's pick it up. That was a 133. Come on. Shooter ready. Stand by. Nice A, nice follow through, left the gun up, 107. Let's go to the 15 yard target. Shooter ready, stand by. Okay, you gotta see, did the sight come up a little weird that time? Yeah, I, I didn't feel real good out of the, out of the okay. holster. And you're also moving your head and your shoulders. Okay. And you're doing these things, really focus on getting everything right. 
Shooter ready. Stand by. Okay. That, oh, it's up in the head. Or the precision zone. The it's upper a B, though. It was a good AB shot. box. That yeah, was a good shot. It would have worked. Did it come, the gun came in, pointed I, up. I think I, I just finished up. Oh, okay. Healed it. Shooter ready. Stand by. Okay. I'm pushing a little too much, pulling a trigger before I'm Okay, remember, ready. we want the draw speed to be the same no matter what the distance is. The only thing we change is our application of the sights and the trigger control. Okay. So make sure you have those for what the target requires. Okay. But we don't want to go to the 25-yard target and, and do a really slow draw. You can mod this and do them all the way out to 50. Okay. Okay? Let's go to that 25-yard target now and see if you have a slow draw, Kevin. Shooter ready. Stand by. Nice, 157. So you went from about a, a 113 to a 157. You know, I mean, that's a nice progression. I'd like to see on this target, I'd like to see in the, the 0.8s, 0.9s, or, or even faster, consistently getting A's though. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see about a 110, 120 out on the 25 yard target getting A's. With a lot more practice. With a lot more practice. And that's what this is about. Go ahead and uh, step in and un unholster for a second and unload and show clear. Gun clear, slide forward, hammer down, holster. Time me on a couple of these. I'm going to tell you another little secret that I do that, that I've never really brought up anywhere. Uh, one of my tips when we're getting ready for that beep, we have a tendency to get anxious. So I give my conscious mind something to do. So at the shooter ready, I'm actually not looking at the target. Hmm. I'm looking down at the base of the target and just, you know, looking around, relaxing. The standby is actually my mental start signal. That's when I snap my eyes exactly to where I want that bullet to go. So you, you don't lose that concentration by you can being only, too long on the target. Right. You can only focus on one thing for so long and your eyes will start blurring out. And I've seen people just sit there and stare at the target, you know, the whole time. All right. they're doing is building that pressure up and up and up. So but a standby command works for me as the start signal. That's okay. when I'm mentally cued. Okay, standby. And I, I shift my visual focus and just listening for the first start of that tone of that beat. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's try it out. Shooter ready. Stand by. It's 109. Yeah, nice and smooth and solid, nothing speedy, just work into them. That's why you want to do 10 of them. You want to progressively pick them up a little bit. Stand by. Okay, 9-6. Now that time I worked my, uh, my left hand, didn't get a consistent grip, so it's something I've got to work on in a little more in dry fire. Stand by. Down to an 8-4. Okay, that was a C though. Don't want those. No reason to give up that point. Stand by. It's a 9-2. Okay, that was nice and consistent. I could probably repeat that one for the rest of it here. Let's go to the 15 yard target. I notice you present your gun to the target. Uh, I prim primarily came out of IDPA shooting. You're not allowed to do that. Not allowed to point the gun at the target, yeah. Uh, dry fire, dry fire, dry fire, so that you've got that index down. Okay, but you always do that, even in a match for the In shooting. a match, if you're allowed to, you can do it before you load and make ready. They'll say load and make ready, and you can take an unloaded side picture. That's generally legal. Um, it depends on the match you're at. Like the world shoot, you're not allowed to. Okay. But the more you have dry fired and worked that position in, the gun will come up that way. If they've got a safety area, go do... 10, 20 draws to get loosened up and having the sights come in nice and smooth every time. So in your dry fire, you don't start here on your first shot. You start up here to get your picture, come back the to other your thing I'm Yeah, that's a good point, because the other thing I'm doing is bringing the gun back, and if you notice, I freeze up my body position. And the last thing I want to have touched, and a big tip for people, 
is the, where that hand is on that gun and then relaxing it. I don't want to move anything around. What a lot of people do is they'll holster and then they'll do all this, then they'll miss their grip on their gun. Of course they do. It's not in the same spot. Because they've moved a body they've position. Moved or, yeah, okay. they move everything around. Okay, so you'll see me, I, I really got it from the shooting the steel challenge. When they've got those plates out there, your index is so critical on that first plate that uh, I even got accused of like being the robot from the 80s and the, <laughs> the dance thing. Because I would, I would actually take, get the sight picture, holster, and everything is just solid right there, not moving anything. If you move your head during a draw, you're going to lose a quarter second. I'll go for some surrender ones. Now you can try these any different way you want. Just time them and write down the differences. Stand by. One eleven. Yeah, a little bit of C. A one eleven. Yes. Let's see if I can pick that up a little bit here. Stand by. It's one oh three. Okay. Let's cut that down to a nine. Now, am I moving my head or my shoulders at all? Not from my position. Okay. Shooter ready. Stand by. It's a 9-7. Okay, let's have you do a couple of kneeling draws. That pack timer is pretty cool. That's the new one that has that the nice. uh, really loud beep. It's got a nice display. It's real clear as to what you're... Yeah, it's got, it shows you your first shot, and if you've, you've fired another shot, it'll show your split, your first shot, and the total time. And it's, it's a nice shape, too. Fits yeah. your hand. It's not the big bulky boxes. And... Yeah. Okay. Are we drawing to a kneel or drawing from a kneel? Going, drawing kneeling into a position. Okay. You always got to work into positions because you don't usually get to start in them. Go ahead, load and make ready. Let's do a couple this way and we'll do one or two prone because I know you're not going to be happy about that. <laughs> Shooter ready. Okay, and let me ask you again, uh, as far as getting ready for the shot, mm -hmm. if I know I have to Say hands relaxed at sides. Okay. They don't specify feet position. Here I'm going to go do a kneeling. Do you typically I get yourself started here and then and then come to here? Or? Yeah, I actually set myself up for that kneeling position so I can come straight down into it. So my right foot's the only one that's going to move. Okay. And so it's going to be more of a, a straight down drop. Okay. You know, if I can, if they'll let me start like that, what the heck? But it puts a holster kind of in a funky position. The goal for me is to keep my up torso forward towards the target and then don't bounce when you hit the knee. Okay. Control the landing so that gun doesn't jump up and down. Okay, let's do it. Come on. Shooter ready. Stand by. 119. Shooter ready. Stand by. 140. You blew your grip on that yeah, one, did. didn't you? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I had to readjust. That's that consistency issue. We've mm -hmm. got to work on that, okay? Let's, let's try one prone. Now, I usually set the mat up just a little, little off center so I can lay down on it. Otherwise, okay. I, I did that one time and I hit the knee on the ground. It hurts. You, know, you, want, you want me to go prone first? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Oh, boy. Figures. Okay, we're going to go prone on that 25-yard target so we know what our prone times are. And it's something where you can practice it in your drills. Uh, write down that you've got a box two yards to the left, and you're going to move prone versus just going prone in one position. You know, if that's a problem for you, work that out. Work it from coming from the right going to the left to go prone with the target downrange. Okay. I wouldn't stand right there. That might hurt. Those big 13s, huh? Yeah, I do have big feet. That's what they call that full commit thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. It looks like it. Shooter ready. Stand by. It's 
be 42. Okay. We're going to move up to target transitions. We've covered all the draws and all the all the basic critical stuff, and now we're going to add in the target transitions. You can modify this by adding draws to it. You can do it, move into a box and do a transition in a box, whatever you want to do with it. You know, just track it. Right. Make sure you get the numbers down, and then you go out to the ranger again. You repeat getting those numbers down and see if you're improving. And to keep the boredom out of it, you can change it around like that a bit each time you're out. Right. But if you're going to track something, track it consistently. You know, track like three runs on it every time you go to the range. Okay. And then, then you can change around afterwards. But that way, at least you get some baseline going for your training. Okay. Okay. We've got a target at 7, 15, and 25. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to time the transitional differences between each, each set of targets going out and then coming back. So we need to know what our different times are. Okay. Okay. So we're going to just go with two rounds on the first target to two rounds on the second target. Then we're going to look at the splits on the pack timer okay. and see what our transition time is and see if we can cut that down. Then we'll go from the first target to the third target, second target to the third target, and then back. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and load up. Now remember, moving your eyes is the critical part. Look where you want to go. This is where you can burn your eyes in because you're up here. You need to look at that second part target. It's at a different height. And what's going to be critical about that is you have to actually move your eyes slightly diagonal to that spot where you want that next bullet to go. A lot of people will just move straight across to it and then they'll be shooting C's and D's down on it because they don't realize and work with the visual differences okay. in the height of the targets. So load and make ready. All right. Good. Start with the gun on target one. I'm just going to set off the clock. Okay. Now you didn't transfer the gun far enough in on that first shot, so that's something to watch for. Same deal. Hang on here. Your split was a .57 going to that second target. That should really be in the .3s to .4s okay. with an A-zone hit. Okay, shooter ready. Stand by. Looked better that time. .47, so you knocked a tenth off of it. Now, what are you seeing when that gun comes into that target? Well, I'm having a little problem with this gun coming left on me anyway. I'm not quite centering my sight and my rear sight okay. for some reason and I'm, I'm my longer shots I'm pulling left. That's why we got to get out and do what? Practice. Okay. Shoot it ready. Stand by. That was a lot smoother. Looked a lot better. The 46. Nice and controlled. Let's and, go to the. And one yeah. of the other things that I get into and I guess a lot of shooters of my caliber is the bang 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 and when I hear you guys shoot it's bang, 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 bang. Holster up for a second. Let's see what my splits sound like. Now, depending upon the difference between the targets, you know, as far as the visual difference, mm -hmm. you'll actually hear a set of pairs, you know, bop, 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 bop. If they're really close together, then that's when you'll hear that smooth string through them. What's probably happening is when that gun goes off and comes back to the target, it's going off again, you're bringing it back to the target there, then moving it over. When it goes off the second time, if you call the good sight lift, get your eyes moving, get that gun moving to that second target. So that all transitions in the movement. Right. Instead of waiting here to finish and then move. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Stand by. Well, that was a beautiful trigger freeze. <laughs> That's why we're out here practicing. Stand by. Now, if you take a look at that clock, review, split, 19, 26, 28. Pretty consistent. Yeah, the split on the far target was about the same as the transition to the far target. Okay. Let's have you step up and do it from the 15 to the 25. <clears throat> Shoot. 
Shooter ready. Stand by. That sounded better. Um, 33, 56, 41. So they're a little tighter together. Try to bring it when that gun goes off the second time, get it driving to that second target. Okay. okay. Shooter ready. Stand by. Try some more bullets. <laughs> okay, let's go. Shooter ready. Stand by. That was a lot smoother. And your split was a 30, a 41, and a 33. So your splits were actually faster and more consistent by just moving that gun off that track. Uh, that's, uh, that's a point I never really got in all of our training is that I think I stay focused on the target I'm finished with through the recoil of the gun and then move. Right. Um, you'll really see it show up on plate racks. When you're doing transitions on plate racks and working out that smoothness, a lot of people will fire the gun, bring it back to that same plate, then move the whole thing over. And you'll never be fast doing that on a plate rack. It's got to break that shot. You have to call a good shot. Right. You know, and once you get good at calling your shots, you'll be able to figure that out and track that recoil and bring it back down into the next plate. Okay. Makes a big difference. <laughs>
So I suppose a 49 going to the right. right. Now that should really, for me, be in the 35s, 38s. So let's see if I, I'll go one more from the right to the left. Okay. I want to see if I can get that one down personally. Okay. <laughs> Stand by. Okay, you were 0 0.50 there. 0 0.50 on the split? Okay, so I was a little slower right to left. I really like shooting left to right better. Okay. But let's let's see what uh, I can get that time down to. Okay. Let's try a couple more rounds here. Go ahead. Stand by. That was a 4.8. A 4.8. Okay. Stand by. I know that was faster without looking at it. That's a 4-0. A 4-0. So just working a little tiny bit, I'm picking those splits up. Right. And then to continue this drill, we can have, as well, outline several other oh, yeah. options on to the, stay with the, these targets. On the uh, PDF, uh, on the DVD, is a complete list of these drills with all the separate steps you need to do. And that gives you a rigid practice structure. But remember, you can modify that anytime you go out there. I mean, this one has, you know, two on each kneeling, even including prone, which a 90 degree transition prone is really difficult. I mean, you got, you can do one on each and repeat it, going back and forth, checking your times, two on each, three on each. You can do target A, standing, go to kneeling and shoot target B. You know, vary it for your shooting and your need. Right. Drill seven, it's a barricade drill. Now we've actually got it set up with a port instead on a, on a wall, which is very easy to make. You just take a, a four by eight sheet of plywood and figure out how to get to stand upright and cut holes in it. Mm -hmm. Now some options on that is you can cut the holes wherever you want to. So you could, you could do all sorts of different movements with one piece of wood that gets you at many different angles. On a barricade, if you've got a, a hole cut in the center, you can do some great drills with it, which is what you would be doing if you're following this drill in the, in the PDF. Lean around the left, punch to the center, punch to the right, without, try to do it without moving your feet around. On a port, we're gonna try to do it without getting our gun stuffed through the port. Okay. Okay? And we're just gonna work left, center, right, on one target, another simple setup, easy to practice with, and it gets us doing a little bit of the movement stuff. I assume there's also some thought that needs to go into your transitioning to the port in this case, as far as where your gun is, you don't want to get to the port and then drop or raise, kind of moving down to it oh, as yeah. you go. Not only that, when you come across here, what, where I see a lot of people have failures on ports like these, they'll come across, pointed like this, and then go to it. I want to I want to know where I have to go. Remember, I'm going to look there first. Right. Then I'm going to look, when I'm getting there, I'm going to have that gun pointed towards that target first. And come in nice and solid with the gun stopping right on the target and not moving afterwards or playing the hide and seek with the target. And ideally shooting through the opening and not through the wood, right? Well, yeah. Well, what can happen with that is, uh, depending on your height and how the port's cut, you might be able to see the target just fine, especially if you're on a uh, open gun. Right and yet you'll make these little holes like some other people did down below. Most likely those won't hit the targets either. The other problem that can happen with that is some of the ranges actually uh, define that as, like if they call it an armored car stage or something, you hit that, it's a DQ. Okay. So you gotta watch out for those heights. Make sure to always take into effect what kind of distance you got here. As some of the taller guys might have the problem with the slide up here Gun goes bang, whacks into the barricade, catches the front sight, might rip it off. But if it doesn't, it might cause a jam. And besides, it really screws up your timing when your gun's whacking into something right. when you're shooting. And, and kind of speaking of that, is should your gun even be through that port to, to even allow that to happen? Right. On this port, it shouldn't be. You should be back here like this. If you get the gun into the port, you've got to do what? You've got to come back out. You've got to take it back out. So you've taken time to go in and Adds time. Adds time. Okay. You know, this position, you could almost shoot it just as a normal standing position, just lowering your vertical height a little bit. Okay. okay? So we're going to have you, uh, we'll actually have you move up to it. Okay. Load and make ready? 
We're going to go straight through the port. You're going to go side? left, port, right. Okay. It's two rounds in each position. Okay, Kevin. Load and make ready. Shooter ready. Stand by. Okay, your total time was a 564. Unload and show clear. Gun clear, slide hammer down, holster. Now, um, when you're practicing, you've got to hit that A zone too. Right. And that's, that was what, five A, or five C's and one A. Right. So you've got to drive those shots in there. You've got to focus. And yes, this is a movement drill. There's a lot of movement, a lot of transition stuff going on. So your first, you repeat this, the first when you take it slow and you build, build to push instead of just trying to start all out. Well, the goal is that your first cold run will be within 5% of your really, really hot runs when you've got a bunch of brass laying on the ground. Okay. So that you build that cold run up. Okay. But you got to get your, because that's what we do in a match. Right. You got to get your focus up for that first run, whether it takes visualizing the stage and actually treating it like a full stage in a match. For you to do that, do it. Okay. You know, whatever it takes to go cold. Here, I'll try it out. Okay, Matt, load, make ready. Okay, I noticed you had some problems moving in over there, too. A little shuffle, shuffle, scoot. Shit ready. Stand by. That was a 545. 545. So let's see where I lost some time there. 218. This footing out here is a little rough, so that's, I lost probably a half second going into that position. 148 to the middle and a 113 to the side. Splits weren't bad, but now what you want to do is take and run it as a stage and break it apart. Do this with your drills. Run something as a stage and find out the individual parts and work on those particular pieces. And again, as we talked earlier, limiting movement, if I take three more steps to get up to the barricade and then come back out or, you know, depending on where the fault lines are, you don't need to, so many times I feel like when I'm in a match, I have to get closer to be closer to the target. Well, not only be closer, but you feel like you want to cut that distance. And anytime there's a wall or anything, we feel like we want to hug up on it, you know? And if, if if you've got the ability to come out and swing out just a little wider and make it a smoother move to the middle, why not? So I mean, in this particular instance, we could almost come out with a kind of a V-shape back to the port and to the yeah. Uh, side. Yeah, no, a little swing out that'll clean out that part and give you more of a diagonal to that port instead of straight across movement. Okay. You know, it just gives more options. That's that's one of the ways of using a very simple port setup. Now on the drill in the uh, on the PDF. With the barricade, you're going to go kneeling, you're going to go left, center, right, right, center, left. Time all those things. You can add in reloads. Left, reload, center, reload, right. You know, so you work all the different things. You so can work you right can side. add to the complexity of it as you build Just into it. Just keep building and building mm -hmm. and building on it in your practice, so you're always doing something different. Okay. Now, at drill number eight, the barricade drill, uh, we're just going to time ourselves from a hard left side of the barricade, move all the way to the hard right. We've got to maintain the position. So, I mean, you can, from a defensive standpoint, you could imagine that's actually cover or a wall or whatever, and you've got to get behind it and engage it effectively. A couple of little key points are the way you do your movement. Coming in smooth and coming in, or at whatever height you come in at, you don't go over to the side of the barricade and then stand up. Okay. Okay. The other thing you want to do is when you're bringing that gun around, I see a lot of people get really, really kind of, I'm going to check this thing here. They come to this side, you'll see their gun do this. Okay. And then they'll drive the gun around the barricade like that. And the problem with that is it's very easy to break the 180 and to have somebody be unsafe, you know. Where the real problem is, is when they go to add in reloads. If they're left-handed going to that side, they're going to be... Like this. Right. It's so, easy way to go home. Again, that's something for us to practice with. Right. 
So when, they're, when, they're, when you're here in a barricade, if you've got to go to one over there and you're left-handed, I'll try to simulate it as best I can, here you're going to have to take and, and bend or break your wrist so it's straight down range. Do your load with the muzzle straight down range and come out like that. For us right-handers going to the left, you're going to have to do the same thing. Now if you've got to do a reload between these kind of positions or between any kind of position, try to do the things in the stages one thing at a time. Okay. So when you fired that last shot and it was perfect, punch that button, get that load going, and try to have it done in the first step. You'll see a lot of people, they'll reload all the way across. Right. Now, which is not definitely beneficial to your time. So get them done, get them done smooth and fast. Uh, this box on the left here is a little smaller than the one on the right, so this one will be a little hard, harder to enter. Okay. I'll go ahead and start in that box. And that what are we doing here? Go ahead and start in the box. They make you tuck up against all sorts of walls and stuff like that. And just do a dry run on it one time. Okay. Just a draw on the target here. Go ahead and draw. And now move over to the other side. Kind of get a visual going through that barricade of where that target's going to be. You're here, so I'm going to have my muzzle pointed at it right here. Come in and just drive the gun straight to it. Oh, okay. It, by the, if you do it a little early, you'll do what I do every once in a while. Just run the muzzle into the barricade. <laughs> okay. Keep that gun up, sights up. Do it again. That was smoother because you came over there and you actually had the gun ready for it, didn't you? Right. It just you kind of look through the wall as you go through. Right. So load make ready. And let's time you from that left side to that right side. Now when you're actually running this drill, time yourself left to right, right to left, left to right with a reload, right to left with a reload. Measure your barricades off so you keep a consistent distance to the barricades, the targets, everything. Shooter ready. Stand by. Now, in the position you're in, you probably couldn't have engaged much more effectively, or more targets effectively, could you? Because you were I'm ready really off balance. Your weight was really off to your right side I there. I probably didn't engage that one effectively by the miss there. Oh, I'm sure it's a double. <laughs> yeah, that could be. When you're coming over to this side, if you take and use your entry foot as this one just outside the box, we covered the cheating the barricade concept. We're up and we pull it in. I'm keeping my weight over my foot and, and kind of kicking my leg out instead of doing the big lean, which is what a lot of people fall out of the barricades on. Right. Okay, so your time between the barricades was 2.51. Now, if they let you start looking at the target. Look at the target. Right. Give yourself every advantage you can. Stand by. <laughs> 245, so about 15 hundreds faster. And There's not a lot of time. Up as targets. It, when you start, you got four or five positions, okay. there's a half second. Okay. Now all those things add up really quick. So get those barricades out there. Uh, they're fairly simple to, to use or to build, I mean. Get two uh, four by eight sheets of plywood, cut it in half, stand them up. All right? Okay. Rule number nine is a very easy drill to set up and very simplistic. We got one plate and yet you can actually work all the different movement angles. Okay, we're going to work it just left to right and right to left. And the goal is to see how many rounds you can shoot between the boxes and how fast you can get the movement going. Okay. So it work, it's well, I can get a lot on if I just start. If you go you know, really stop. slow. Yeah. 
But if you take your time and divide that by your hits on the plate, it'll give you your hit factor. Right. You know, so it gives you a little bit more of an advanced skill set off of this drill. Then you can work it from the 20 yard to the 10 yard moving forward, from 10 to 20 moving rearward. Okay. Yeah, so it's got a bunch of options. The whole goal is just to work on the smooth movement all the time, but still get the trigger speed up on the plate. Okay. Okay, so load and make ready. Now remember, when you've got uh, plates like this, you want to make sure that you're at least 10 yards from the plate. Otherwise, you might get some splatter back. You might get it further back, too, so I always have eye and ear protection on. Now, you can't shoot until you leave this box. Okay. Okay. What would be your first movement out of this box? Would it be this kind of step or would you? I would step with my left foot. Okay. So it'd be more like that because that's going to also get my hips rotated for my movement because I want my hips to follow the movement. And you can't shoot once you're in that box because you'd be faulting that one. Okay. It's just working the movement. Shoot ready. Stand by. You got eight shots off and four hits. Not bad. <laughs> it's like I need to go back to Indiana and work on that one a little bit, huh? Don't worry, I'll do it soon and I'll probably screw it up too. Shooter ready. Stand by. Well, you got like eight hits out of ten shots. Pretty nice job. I noticed you had to do a reverse going this way. Right. When your your strong hand is opposite of the movement, it's going to be easier probably to flip your body into reverse and start walking into the reverse there. Oh, you want me to do it now, huh? Yes, I do. I'm tired. You're tired. Hold on. Get ready. Stand by. Nine shots off and 384. Yeah, I think I, I think I pushed two of them off the right edge of the plate because I was watching that muzzle rise up. That's why it's called practice. Stand by. That was 10 and 438 and maybe a couple misses. I had um, one edger and one miss. That's why we got And again, that's push. something that we just we want to build and push and build and push. and. Right. And then can you get it up to 15 shots in the same amount of time? And again, in part of our practice, dry fire practice, we can, as we sh uh, saw in earlier videos, take the water bottle to practice with it in our hands to smooth out our movement. Right, yeah, work out all those all those details on the movement. A, a lot of people vary their height. That that just kills you on this kind of target. Or like me, I'm kind of lead foot. And... Yeah, you don't, you're not doing that heel toe thing. Right. You know, work on all those details and, and this brings them together in a real nice simple stage that you can set up almost anywhere. Don't spend a lot of time taping and... Right, I mean, any of almost any of the stages you can actually use uh, the metal plates, you can order them up from MGM, and, uh, you know, they're easy to replace on the range. You just move them around, you know, you, psh, and you're done. You don't have to tape them every, every run. I have a few of his uh, mini Ipsic targets. Oh, yeah. The and they're ones. real nice because it still has an Ipsic look, but it's about half size. Right. And if you uh, put that at 25 yards and work on that. It's like a 50-yard target. Right. So. Yeah, it, it, make it as hard as you can on yourself, and when you get out to uh, the match, life's going to be a lot easier. Well, Kevin, this is uh, drill number 10, and it's personally my favorite training drill that I have. Okay. Uh, it, there's nine shooting boxes and three targets, or you can run nine paper targets. I usually do it with steel just because I'm doing working on all the movement and all the times between positions. I want to go down there and reset everything every time. Right. So these are non-falling steel. Okay. Um, you can work everything from first box forward in all the different positions. You can 
work rearwards, all the diagonals, every single angle you want to work. Forward, backward. Yeah, you can from that box to that box, from here to here, from there to the front. You can shoot on the move going in between. It's really unlimited as far as practice. And again, just track what you're doing. Track what you're doing. You know, on the uh, on the drill sheet, it actually has box A, B, C, D, whatever, and that way you're able to go. Well, I went from box A to F, and my time was such and such. And I assume if you don't have range space or whatever, you can throw out a couple boxes and consolidate this into. You can yeah. do it with, you know, like six boxes instead or four boxes, but you really lose a lot of the angles. Uh huh. You know, this gives you such a, a variation. You can come from that corner, go to the middle, go back to that corner. You can set up your, if you got nine targets, you can set up one as an easy set, one as a kind of, you know, some hard cover, and the other one with no shoots all over it. Oh, I see. So okay. you get all these variations with your practice so, out of one simple thing. So just try to vary your practice with what you see in a match. You know, if you see some and no anything shoots you and, can actually think up. Yeah, you know, okay. if you can think up something that's going to be a real pain, you know, right. <laughs> it's really where you'd go, oh my God, I want to do what? Okay. Then set it up and, and work on it. And again, this goes to just to pushing yourself and doing the things that may be uncomfortable beyond just standing in front of a plate rack and going bang, bang, bang. Right. Find your weaknesses. Now, you can add in reloads between all these boxes. Okay. You know, so start in the middle box. Shoot the, the one on the right, run all the way to the one on the left. Do a reload. Go to that set. Work all the way across. Go to the front set. Shoot the one on the left freestyle, the one in the middle strong hand, the one on the right weak hand. Okay. And then you can start up in the front corner and do it all in reverse. So you can spend a day on this drill? Yes, I have. Okay. I have. It's, it's fantastic because there's no, there's no real limitation to it. The only thing it doesn't have is shooting around something. And it's very simple to take and pop a barricade into like this position here. Mm -hmm. And now you've got all the angles for that. And the nice thing is it gives you 10 yards to the front box about 16 yards to the middle box and like 23, 24 yards to the last box. So you're covering most of the distance that we would see in a match. Right, oh, and, and the box over there on the diagonal gets even more distance. Mm -hmm. you know, so you've got all of these options in one very, very easy thing to set up. Okay. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Let's, let's have you start out here in the far corner box. And we'll just have you go, just for an example, we'll have you shoot this plate here twice. Go to the middle box, shoot it twice. Go to the front box, shoot it strong hand twice. Go to the left box, shoot it weak hand twice. Hmm. So okay. are you gonna be able to remember that? Probably not, but we'll see. Load make ready. Shooter ready. Stand by. Nice follow through at the end. Your time was 11.31. You had two misses. I think it was two anyway. Um, oh, we were supposed to hit the steel? Yeah, they were supposed to go ding. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you went into that middle box, I clear. what was, yeah, you're clear. What was your, uh, what was your error into that one? I felt like I landed pretty hard. You landed pretty hard and then brought the gun up to the target. So I, I let it fall in my transition. Yeah, you ran like this and then ran in there, landed hard and then brought the gun up. So you lost a bunch of time going into that box. What is the distance if, if I'm coming from this corner on over to the far corner, do you let the gun come down a little to build your speed? I always run with the gun up okay. and, and you know, a lot of people run like this when they do it. So I get my arms out and that way I can still use my shoulder movement and everything else, but I've got a good visual where the gun is. So that gun really just never right. gets out of here, right. out of your box. Yeah, I can do one from that rear box okay. all the way to that corner. Okay, load and make ready. Nice angle on this berm here, huh? Shoot ready. Stand by. Good. holster. So you can see, you can just work 
an endless number of things here. Right. Till you get so tired, you need to go home. Right. And that was a uh, 3.4 for the split between boxes. Good. And that's a pretty good run. That's 20 that's, yards almost. Yeah, it should be about 18 yards, something like that. But, I mean, you got so many options with this one particular practice thing that you should never get bored out there. Great. Right, well, let's go do the bonus session. Oh boy. I bet you're looking forward to that one. Yes, I am. Matt, we talked a little earlier. One of my personal demons is a Texas star. Uh, I just never have quite figured out how to run the thing, shoot it properly, uh, keep it from spinning all over the place. Uh, you know, end up wasting a ton of time anytime I see these things in a match. I don't know if it's in fact my wife's from Texas or what, but there's something about it, you know. So you got, you I, got a mental hang. Yeah, I must have. But if you could bring these, uh, give us all some kind of advice, because I know this is just not me that has a problem with this. Well, the first thing that people do is shoot the star out of order, and kind of the goal on that is whatever the highest plate is first goes first. Okay. Okay. So when you get that one, if we shot that top one, it probably wouldn't rotate much because it's just going to settle a little bit. And then when you get to the next layer down, you try to get that one. It's your third plate that actually turns out to be the critical one. And it's your transition between your second and third plate that's really... So if you miss that transition, it, you start the whole spin process. It's going to start spinning pretty good on you, probably. Okay. Um, you know, so the goal is to keep it so it goes ding, barely moves, barely moves, barely moves, barely moves. And it all depends on how fast you shoot it. Now, That's if you start top down. Right, top down. Okay. Um, the MGM Ironman, their match... Uh, you have to shoot it from the bottom up because it's a two-minute penalty if you don't hit the bottom plate first. And then that generally starts it spinning. Oh, yeah. They're, okay, now. It could be a little meaner. I think I can understand the concept if we can keep it from moving. It's, it's just plates. Right. Now, if if somebody starts that stage with a popper and start it spinning or like you say... Right, you they put a weight on it and they spin it. Now, leads on shots, is there anything other than just practice or what can well, you do? Well, practice, obviously, but the the best thing to do is basically whatever the plate is if you aim directly at the plate most likely you're gonna just snatch the trigger and, and shoot behind it if you're aiming at whatever direction it's going on the leading edge you're probably almost always gonna hit it okay because you got that delay of pulling the trigger and we have a tendency to stop the gun when we're pulling the trigger we don't usually just go and actually f smoothly follow it so almost like a skate shooting you want to you want to finish after you pull the trigger right. you want to keep swinging the, through with it if it's you know in a full spin okay if they're just sitting there doing this thing just rotating a little bit just hit them right yeah right. i'll take and try to knock these okay. things down from Great. the top down we'll do this without times ready So I'm going to go top, right, left, probably bottom left and center because it's going to have, the top's going to give it a little rotation this way, then I'll hit the one at uh, every one of these sets up differently so you really got to look at the target right. and figure them out. Okay, so well, I took... What's so hard about that? I, not, not a lot. I took one extra shot. When I came down to the second plate, I pushed it right over the top edge of it so you gotta you really gotta look where you're going with those okay let's set it back up again okay kevin step on into the box load and make ready have you try your nemesis Go ahead and unload and show clear. And clear, hammer holster. So, uh, Kevin, said. Well, I mean, it obviously wasn't quite as good as you. It was close. Well, no, but, but I mean, what, I think, what happened? Uh, well, I don't know. I think with steel in general, uh, you kind of wait for the reaction. So you're shooting with your ears instead of your eyes? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, most people do that. They actually shoot with their hearing because they want to hear that clang. That's mm -hmm. that, that warm, fuzzy feeling that it actually hit right, something. Right. One of the other problems can be if you hit the metal bar instead of the plate, you'll get the clang. Oh, and, uh, but you won't go to the, or you'll go to the next target. So you just want to see the drop? Well, no, not even, you don't even need to see the drop. Those little bumpy things on top of the gun or the red dot go bang and they move up. 
call your shots. Okay. And you have to learn how to call your shots, especially on steel. A uh, good way to do that is to take out uh, a metal target and a couple of paper plates. Drive the paper plates into the ground right next to the metal target. Like a 20 yards, you know, like uh -huh. a round plate. So then you go clang, clang, and then put two rounds onto the paper plates. Oh, to eliminate that auditory. That thing. feedback loop. Yeah. And it's, it's a different kind of issue for you when you start doing that, because you'll be katong, katong, bang, bang, and you'll be like, I don't know if I hit those. Okay. But it'll force you into that loop of actually seeing your, seeing your sight slip, seeing your shots. Okay. Okay? Let me do this one more time. All right. I was surprised you haven't said anything else, Kevin. Like, why don't you shoot the bottom one first, Matt? Let's give it a try. Okay, now, which one would be the right, the correct bottom one to shoot? The one on top. <laughs> which one, the right or the left? Well, I think you'd try to eliminate the movement. I would assume that the one on the right has less movement because it's closer to the center line of the target. It's closer to the center line of the target, but which one's gonna move the rack less? That's what you gotta think of. Okay, that weight is going to swing less far. That weight's going to swing further. Okay. Okay, so let's try that bottom right Let's one. see what happens. Yeah, see if it works. Now it's going to rotate. How is that going to rotate when I knock that plate off? Is the top going to come down this way, or is it going to go this way? It's hard to tell at this point, though it's almost even. Let's find out. Gets a pretty good spin going to it. That's how it? you shoot a Texas star. Yeah. And the main thing is, don't get psychologically bunched up on them. A lot of people walk up, they see it, and they just they lock up. They're already done before they even started shooting at mm -hmm. it. When you fall on it, lead on the on the plates a little bit. You know, because you're gonna be playing catch up. Okay. Great. Okay. Any questions on that, Kevin? No, it's good information. Cool. Now we're up at the Scottsdale Gun Club for the final tip. How to use a laser to improve your training and shooting on the move. Right? Okay. Have you ever done that, Kevin? No, I haven't. It should be fun. It's, it's interesting because it, you know, we have the water bottle in volume one through three, right. which it shows you kind of what the gun's doing, but it really doesn't show you what the effects are going to be downrange. And when you get that laser out there, if you're not moving right, not moving those feet right, you'll find out that it's going to bounce all over. See that bouncing all over the place. Good. Oh, well, nice. Let's check it out. Okay. Well, Kevin, we've got a Glock 17C here, and it doesn't really look like it's got a laser on it, does it? No, it doesn't. Laser Max makes this internal unit. Uh -huh. It actually replaces the guide rod, and you turn it on by pushing the takedown button. Wow. And uh, so it's pretty slick. So we're going to get turn that thing on, and go ahead and just walk across. Do your shooting on the move, going across that target, and your full stance and everything. That was pretty good. Come on back. Oh, no, work it both directions. So you'd get to learn how to do it every which way. Come to this down. Obviously, you can see some moving in and out of the A zone. And oh, yeah. You can also around. tell when you're getting really close to the 180. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, another little thing with it is very simple is getting used to moving fast. It gives you a visual reference as to where that muzzle is when you're moving. Okay. You know, so you can work on it in dry fire, work safely moving across the range, you know, without breaking that 180. Or again, in your basement, with target on the wall. In your basement, in the back room, whatever you need to do. Okay. You can see how a laser would be beneficial to dry fire training. Absolutely. Also, besides just the side to side, you can work forward to back. You can do your circle drill that drives me crazy with it. <laughs> Uh, hey, you love that one, yeah, don't you? Oh, yeah. Lots of options with, with the laser, and obviously you don't have to spend any money going down range with the uh, lead. Right. Well, a lot of people don't realize that when they're dry fire training that there's so many options. The only thing you really can't do in dry fire training is the recoil control. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, you can do your movement, your target transitions, your draws, your reloads, and everything else, but they don't, they don't think about that. All they do is just stand there and do draws. Right. You know. And, uh, keeps that whole process from being boring. So. I assume in our dry fire, just like in our drills that we had, an individual could set up 10 dry fire drills and do the same kind of charting and so forth as well. Very similar. It's just harder to get the, um, the times. Mm -hmm. Working work well, a dry fire, just work on the smoothness. But, but just know? numbers. I did this 
I did the circle thing four times, and I did you know ten draws and right. that kind of thing. Well, uh, Steve Anderson's book, uh, uh, Dry Fire Training, has tons of drills, and it's got all of the tracking things for the numbers you did and everything else. Oh, okay. cool. So there's actually a sample of the uh, a couple of the dry fire sheets on the DVD. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, how to practice, and it makes a difference in your shooting out on the range and in your performance across the board. Kevin, thanks for coming out. Very welcome. Enjoyed it. Great. Do uh, you have a good time learning anything? Absolutely. Always do. Now if I can just take it and use it. That's the, that's the big trick. Right. Practice. Yeah. Get out there, practice, and do your work on the range. It'll pay off when you go to the competitions. Why don't you just put a couple little stand by? Let's just put a couple little for... highlights to hit on the board. No, all I've got to do is several uh, tips, and it's the what's the one for drills? Because I don't want to give it a number. Many, because we might have eleven okay, drills. Okay, so drills. I don't want to go eleven drills, and then we actually have ten. Why don't you say we're going to have tips and drills to just improve your to improve your shooting? To improve we'll your have shooting. several tips and drills to improve your shooting. There you go. Okay. How to practice. How to practice. How to practice. Huh? Volume seven. How to practice. How to practice. Volume seven. How to practice. How to listen to really loud gunshots in the background. <laughs> Your chest could be oh, we're, we're on. We're talking amongst ourselves now and I got the teapot going. So. How to practice. What am I doing in this opening? Just, Just smiling and nodding. Okay. Okay. And where are we starting looking? We're going to be on camera one here. We're going to go one, two, three. Action. Welcome to Practical Shooting Volume 7, How to Practice. I'm Matt Burkett and this is Kevin Elpers. We're going to help you out today with a whole bunch of tips that will get you going on practice more solid and efficiently than ever before. Then we're going to go through a bunch of shooting drills, and we're going to finally end up out at the Scottsdale Gun Club, helping you learn how to shoot on the move with a laser. So let's get off, get off to those tips. Let's get, get off. off. <laughs> I wanted to get rid of the whole bunch of them as soon as I said it anyway. I knew you said a whole bunch. I'm like, Rah! make get sure out. you keep those. Blah blah. <laughs> Several tips and drills. Welcome to Practical Shooting Volume 7. I'm Matt Burkett and this is Kevin Alpers and I didn't <laughs> say the how to practice. I'm gonna go shoot I'm gonna go shoot myself. Okay? I'm not screwing it up on video. I'm just <laughs> really shooting. This bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Are we coming in? Hey, is he gonna move? Oh, no. Welcome to Practical Shooting Volume 7, How to Shoot Faster. I'm Matt Burkett and this is Kevin Elpers. We will be helping you... You know what I said? <laughs> the volume. Now, one of the first things I always do when I get to the range... <laughs> <laughs> do I smell funny today? What's yeah, going on? It's an eye movement drill. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, <laughs> okay, but you want to tell us why your hat's crooked? Thank you. <laughs> your, your head's crooked, isn't it? Come on. Get on with the show. <laughs> yeah, they got the, the little special helmets for you. <laughs> In drill three, this is uh, build drills. It's a pretty standard exercise that 
I bet you'll find nearly every grandmaster out there in the world does. And it really gets you into sight picture and trigger control and starts picking up the speed. So okay. we're going to start really pushing things. Now we got three different targets. We got one at seven, one at 15, and one at 25. And one where the machine gun's shooting. That helps. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. You had to blow that one. Well, he came in with his golf cart, too. So. Now, in drill three, we've got uh, three targets set up, one at 7, 15, and 25. And this is build drills. You'll okay. shoot four six-round runs at each distance. And this really helps you work on trigger control, recoil control. <laughs> <laughs> I can't look at you when you're looking over there. Well, we've got a... In or out? Pick one. Well, we've got a uh, Glock 17C here. Now, it doesn't look like it's got a laser on it. Right. But that's that crimson trace. It's actually yeah. an... Laser Max. Laser Max. Well, we've got a Glock 17C. I better give that a couple of seconds again. Probably need a little... Yeah. Yeah, but you got to... Does, yeah, does it, did it look different if it shot from a different angle or not? The dot? No, shouldn't. So we wouldn't know if that was. Right, it's not going to. See, watch the camera. Watch the camera. Right, the dot doesn't know. Hey, you're fing pretty stable. Well, no, I'm doing that. Mr. Shady. I'm going to really do it? Yeah. It's not moving off that edge. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't move off the Ah, oh, that's better. That's better. It's fucking good work, it really is. It's interesting when you do the when you do the transition yeah. from forward to back it, it moves out of the zone more. It kind of shows you that don't be pulling a fucking trigger when you're right there. Ready? Three. Really two. Out of my don't even worry about it. Come on. In a hurry? Daylight's burning. <laughs> Production crews <laughs> cost us money. Yeah. Well, it started raining outside, so we had to uh, come inside or indoors to the Scottsdale Gun Club. We told them we were going to do that before. I know, but we actually have an excuse this time. Thanks. Start over. Way to go. <laughs> now we're here at the Scottsdale Gun Club like we told you we were going to be. I don't think we put it in there. <laughs> Okay. For the final shooting tip, we're going to help you. I'm just going to. I'm going to fucking smack you. Stop. Shut up. This is our hardest part. The first five minutes are. Yeah, then we roll big time. You can take your ears off. That probably came through really nice. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. I'll shoot. But, uh, Kevin, thanks for coming out. Great, enjoyed it. Enjoy it. You learn anything this time? Absolutely, as always. Hopefully next time we'll be able to put more of it into usage. <laughs> Great. Okay. I know Let's you're see. staring at me like, No, the exit's fine. See, ready? We just go like this. Are we done? That's right. <laughs>